But if I have to pick one of these shoes for my next race day, Shoe comparison I've got for you guys today, we've got the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite 3 up against the Nike Vaporfly 3. So we're gonna go through their similarities, their differences, and their key features. And hopefully from that, that's gonna give you guys a great indication of choosing the right race shoe for you. But before we get into it, a massive shout out to my number one running store, the running company at Geelong. I've got a link to their website in the description. Make sure you go check out that and check out all their running gear. And also guys, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And with our quick specs here, so in the price department, it's a little bit cheaper for the Puma over here in Australia, but $20 difference in the US, which is, which is quite interesting. Now in the weight, Vaporfly does weigh the lighter shoe. Can you feel that on the foot? Yes, you can. So not by much though, by no means is this Puma a heavy shoe at all. Dead even in the stack heights and also in the drop. When you wear these two shoes at the same time, which shoe feels higher? Well, I think the Elite feels a little bit higher. And in your uppers, so two different concepts going on here. So with the Puma, material that they use is what they call Ultra Weave. Now, it's super light and super thin. However, it, I think it could be more breathable. Uh, to the touch though, it's quite sc uh, scratchy and it feels a little bit stiff. Uh, our heel counter, we've got a little bit of play here, so it can fall down quite easily, but it's certainly not super flimsy like you see some race shoes. In the padding department, we've got a minimal amount of padding just around the heel collar there, and the padding rolls down towards the middle uh, of the heel there. Uh, our tongue has got one pad on it, which is right in the center of it, and that's obviously where you tie up to take that laces pressure up. Interesting material they've picked to, uh, for the tongue. It's a bit foamy, so I can picture it's gonna soak up a lot of sweat. The tongue is not gusseted. Uh, laces as well, these laces are made out of a, like a felt material, which, which is quite elastic -y and quite stretchy. So again, I can see these laces really filling up with sweat, especially on those marathons. Now in the lockdown department, no issues here in this shoe. Lockdown feels pretty good. In the fit, the shoe comes up long and I think it's just got to do with uh, the, sh the, uh, the actual toe box shape of Puma shoes. So they're certainly a lot pointier than some of the other shoes on the market. So when you put it on, it may feel a little bit long, but in the width department, it's still quite snug. So you could probably, if you've got a really thin foot, you could probably come down half a size, but I think if you've got a normal or a wide foot, I think you're just gonna have to stay, tr stay true to your size. Now in the build quality, pretty good here, and in the comfort, it's a very comfortable shoe to put on as well. Now with the Vapor Fly, so material that they use, so they use their fly net. Now this material, it's pretty much just, it's just like a net. So the breathability in this shoe is second to none. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, it sort of conforms around the foot as well, and it's nice and flexible. So the very comfortable material, this fly net. In our heel counter here, so it's probably got more structure, and it's probably more stiff than what you're gonna find in the Puma but we've got a quite of a stiff edge around the, the heel collar there. But in the padding department, they've got an internal heel pad, as you can see there, and that do, that's just in the right spot. So that sits sort of just above the heel there, and that does a great job to hold the foot into place. Now in the tongue, interesting tongue here, so half the tongue is still made out of fly knit, and then they, it's, certainly, it's certainly finished off quite nicely with some premium materials at the top. It's got a nice cut as well, a bit of a, a wing fit at the top, so that sits nicely on top of the foot as well. The tongue in the Vaporfly is not gusseted, so it's the same as the Puma. The laces that they're using are these notched laces, which are absolutely amazing, so they do a great job to cinch the foot down uh, and tie up, and just it just adds to the lockdown of the shoe. The lockdown in this shoe, again, excellent. Now, in the fit department, length, true to size here, but the vol this has got a voluminous toe box, a pretty wide uh, baggy toe box as well. But it's, I think that's like that to accommodate the foot swelling when you run those really long races. Now build quality here, uh, it's okay, it's Nike. There's a few loose stitches and a little bit of glue that I can see, but it's okay from Nike. And in the comfort department, it's a pretty comfortable upper. 
And with our outsoles here, so two pretty similar design concepts going on, and you'll notice that's the trend in all shoes these days. Pretty much the forfeits are all covered, and then the two high wearies at the back. They've always got exposed foam through the middle of the shoes. And both these shoes, as you can see there, they've got their little windows there, or little cavity there, and that's where you can see the exposed carbon plate. Now, just uh, rating these two outsoles, so what they use in the Puma is Puma Grip. Now, this rubber is market leading. It's absolutely amazing, very durable. And in the grip department, it's, it's second to none. So it's absolutely amazing. And you'll notice here what they've done, they haven't just covered the whole forefoot, they've actually allowed a little slit through the middle of the forefoot there as well, just to sort of add to, some, add to the ride as well. So they don't want it nice and stiff and rigid through here. So just removing a little bit of rubber through the middle just does a little bit to the ride so it doesn't uh, come across as too slappy with using this rubber. Now with the Vaporfly, what you're gonna see here, they've got the entirety of the forefoot covered. Uh, but they've also got some exposed foam here, like through some little holes there, and obviously that's trying to bring the weight down. But this waffle outsole pattern is what they use here. And again, it's tried and tested. It holds up really well. It's grippy in all conditions, not as grippy uh, or as durable as the Puma Grip, but it still does a pretty good job as well. And where the magic happens is always in the midsole. So both these shoes are using their brand's premium foam. So they use the Nitro Elite foam in the Puma, and they use the tried and tested market-leading Zoom X uh, in the Vaporfly. But with our uh, Puma, what's going on here? So two layers of that Nitro foam. So they've got a top layer, then they've got their uh, power plate or their carbon plate is what they call it. And then under that, they've got another layer of their Nitro foam as well. Now, with the carbon plate in this shoe, it's quite different to what you're gonna find in the Vaporfly. So it's actually got a sharp, it starts off quite high in the shoe, and you can see where these two uh, foams join, of where, uh, what the angle is like with this carbon plate. So it's quite an aggressive angle down, and it dips really low in the shoe, and then angles up. So in the geometry of this shoe, it sort of mimics the carbon plate. So the forefoot rocker starts about here and it actually curves up quite aggressively in this shoe. Now rigidity wise, very, very stiff shoe, but it's certainly not the stiffest shoe out in the market. There's a little bit of play there as you can see, but uh, in terms of rigidity, I'd call this a really stiff shoe. Now with the Vaporfly, as I said here, there's two layers of Zoom X, so your top layer and then under that, they have got their fly plate, which is what they call their carbon plate. And then under that, obviously, another layer of Zoom X. Now, you can see here where the, where the joins are in the Zoom X, and that's the shape of the carbon plate in the Vaporfly. So you'll notice that the, it's no way, the angle is nowhere near as steep as what it is uh, in the Puma. It actually starts towards the middle of the shoe here, uh, and it just comes down, and then it starts, it sort of, shapes down not as aggressively, it's much more flatter, and then it sort of curves up towards the four foot rocker here. But I'll, sh I'll show both here, and you can just see uh, just the difference in the angles of where those joins are, of how different shape these two carbon plates are. And obviously that translates into the ride. But in the stiffness department, again, this is a very stiff shoe, so it's probably about the same stiffness uh, as the Puma, so there's pretty much nothing uh, in them in rigidity wise, but where they are different is in the geometry. So we've got a further back four foot rocker here in the Vaporfly, so it starts further back and it's certainly far more gentle. So it's not as late and aggressive or it's tip 40. Yeah, it starts further back in the shoe and that's obviously gonna ac accommodate a different range of paces. And in your rides here, so two pretty different sensations going on here. So the Puma is certainly the softer ride, it's the more bouncy ride, obviously that leads to more energy return. Uh, it's certainly the more aggressively rocked shoe as well, and for me, it's more fun. Now with the Vaporfly, it's more responsive, this shoe. Uh, the rocker is more gentle. Uh, the Zoom X foam is still soft, however, you don't squish in it as far as what you do in the Puma. So you feel like you squish down a little bit, and it bottoms out, and then you sort of get your responsiveness uh, 
uh, as you roll through your foot strike. As I said, not as aggressively rockered, so it feels like it can accommodate. You get the most out of this shoe, I think, at more pace ranges uh, than over the Puma. Uh, in the comfort department, as I said, this is a firmer ride. It doesn't feel, for me, as comfortable as the Puma. And in the stability department, for me, the Puma feels like the more stable shoe, even though it's got the softer foam. I think it's just got the wider base that makes me feel like it is a little bit safer than the Vaporfly. And that's used for both these shoes. They're obviously race day options, but for me, I think the shorter races, I'm going to lean towards uh, the Vaporfly. Certainly in a 5K, I'm going to pick the Vaporfly. Uh, anything above that, say 10K, half K marathon, I'm going to lean towards the Puma. So two pretty evenly matched shoes here. So both race day options. It's going to come down with what you prefer. So if you'd like a more responsive ride, a lighter ride and not so rocked, then the Vaporfly is the shoe for you. However, if you want a more bouncy ride, a little bit more exciting, a little bit more aggressive rocker, I think that the Puma uh, is the best way to go. It's great to see now that so many other companies have certainly caught up to Nike and even surpassing Nike uh, in some of their performance features of their shoes. So the, the playing field is certainly more even than it used to be. But if I have to pick one of these shoes for my next race day, I am going with the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite. It's just the fun factor, the bounce factor, and the softness of this shoe, which I much prefer over the Vaporfly. But again, it's gonna come down to what you guys prefer. What are you like in your rides? Any questions that you guys have got for me regarding these two rides, anything that I didn't cover and that you want me to explain, please just drop that in the comments below. But anyway guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.